was so unexpected. It's one of those you had to be there moments. You had to be there. It subsequently genuinely did change everything about my life. I had to be there. Okay, it is uh, one of our uh, most popular and favourite slots on the show. It's You Had to Be There. Our guest this week is Owen Colgan, who is obviously a comedian and a fitness expert. More so, more so a fitness expert. But uh, As the fitness uh, industry, it's, it's, it's all the rage these days. It is, yeah, yeah. It's good to keep in shape, you know. And uh, when you combine the two worlds together... It's like a Magic happens Synergy you know Yeah exactly yeah, Very of the now um, Before we get into Your list Which is brilliant um, You're busy at the moment Got some gigs Going on around the country um, I'm in Mullingar tomorrow I was in Derry last week And uh, go within In a few weeks time as well So So you're doing the bypass The whole time On your own Yeah pretty much Yeah yeah We kind of At the beginning of the Hardy Books We all like did the show together but then, because everyone's busy with their own stuff, that we just decided we start doing our own stuff, you know? Okay, so you've got a full hour of yeah. comedy. Yeah, a full hour of comedy, yeah, yeah. That's tough. It's tough, yeah, definitely. But the only way to do it is to... The only way to get good at it is to actually go on stage and do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because you can practice as much as you want at home, but you need the people there mm-hmm. to get the reaction. Because it, it gets to a point where if you're at home going over all your material... You think it's no good anymore You don't even know what's funny You're like is People this? aren't laughing Because there's no one there Exactly yeah yeah, yeah. So it, it starts off You're like oh this is funny That's funny You start putting it all together As a story And then you try to put A narrative through the whole thing And then at the end of it You're like I don't know If any of this is funny um, And are you uh, Like a student of comedy history Or that kind of stuff or like, know, I wouldn't, When I started off I wouldn't have been at all I would have just like Because it happened This career for, of mine Happened by accident With the Hardy Bucks So Just fill people in What happened So how did that happen Well I was working in Galway And the lads were working In different parts of the country And then What were you doing I was working in uh, Easton's Right Out the back tagging books Right Yeah And uh, I do you a good deal If you want Yeah happy days in Easton's. Love reading me <laughs> <laughs> Tagging so, books And talking shit in the back room Pretty much I was hanging out With the security guard The whole time right. in the back And there was another guy That worked in the back He wor- he was always obsessed With World of War You know that game World of War yeah, for, yeah. He kept on about it Every day And I was like I have to get out of here <laughs> So uh, Eddie Durkin And the Viper Those two fellas They were doing Like a school project So they said Oh come to Mayo For a weekend and How did you know them I knew I knew Eddie Durkin I'll just stick to their like acting names because that's probably handier I knew Eddie Durkin through French Toast because I used to go to school with French Toast and play football with them okay so he's like there's this new lad in town and this lad landed up with like long red hair and I was like he's, he's a lunatic so we kind of started all hanging out together and then they were doing a school project in Ballyfermot right so they had to do a weekend project and they just said do you want to get involved and I was working at the time I was like I don't want to be tagging books all my life <laughs> not that there's nothing wrong with that like, no no good trade if you can get it yeah, so exactly that yeah. was the birth of the Hardy books pretty much yeah well the lads had already filmed a pilot but then they went and they we filmed like another kind of extended kind of demo pilot right so then got myself and Salmon and different characters involved and it just it just took off from there then you know it seems like it was a giant success straight away Maybe it seems like that in hindsight, but I don't think it was. There was okay. a, a lot of time in the middle where, like, we were hanging around like for weeks, going, "What's what's happening now? Do we keep doing this as a career?" Or because <laughs> none of us really knew what we were doing with our careers at that time. So it just kind of took off from there, you know. And then we started getting a few gigs here and there. And the first gig we ever did was actually in Casabar. Right. You might know Casabar. Yeah, Jesus. And uh, the five of us went up on stage, but like we didn't really know the etiquette of stand up, so we just all started delivering our stories at the same time. <laughs> and we were like trying to kind of get on top of each other with delivering the stories. So the crowd was like looking on with a lot of confusion, you know? Okay, yeah. But that was, you know, that was part of it too. That's how great things start. Exactly. In a bit of chaos. Yeah. You know, you need to take the chance as well. Where, like, where, so. where did Bows come from? Where did the name Bows come from? Eddie Durkin. He was, I think he was doing a prank call one night and the fellow goes, who's this? And he goes, it's uh, Buzz McDonald. So then the name just stuck from there. And then about a week later, we were doing another prank and uh, the fellow goes like, who's this? And I said, the Eddie Durkin. And then the two names just kind of came from that. So it's just random names, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, Billy Buzz McDonald. That's the name I go by. Brilliant, isn't it? Do you, how do you look back on that time now? I look back at it as a great like kind of diary of the friendship that we had because I can see not just the messing we did on camera but I can see how we were getting on at the time too and we were hanging out all the time so you know there'd be periods where we'd be like I'm sick of hanging out with that lad or there'd be other bits where you know you kind of know how you're feeling in your life at that point as well so 
um, to have it on camera is great, you know. Yeah. And I didn't. I didn't think it, people would still talk about it, but the fact that they are, it's a good sign, I guess, you know. And the the fact that you are now that that's who you are. You've become a comedian. Yeah. yeah. Off the back of it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's strange, you know, because I never really thought about doing this as a career, and then all it just kind of happened by accident. So. I'm kind of going with it now. So I'm kind of envious of people who were like, when I was 10, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. When I was 10, I, I didn't really know at all. Maybe play football. Do you have any bits and bobs like the, the Celtic jerseys, famous, the, the even the vests? It's kind of like Arnsolo from Keeping Up Appearances, the, the, the vest, even Eddie Durkin. Do you, do you have bits and bobs that you still have props-wise? No, I had, like, anytime we do a gig, you know, I might, like, if I was wearing the Celtic jersey, I'd get really excited and I'd take it off and just go, <laughs> you can keep that. And then after the gig, I'd be like, ooh, I want that back, actually. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes I'd have to go back and say I might just get Excuse that off you again <laughs> but um, a few there's a few bits I've got a Drake jumper at home and it was just a random one that I found in a second inch shop and it's just like Drake doing a dance move so I have that in the attic at home brilliant <laughs> and that's not going anywhere for the moment but that's that's about it the odd script and that kind of thing yeah yeah so make sure I give everybody an opportunity if anybody wants to buy tickets just google Owen Colgan yeah it's on my Instagram as well okay Owen Colgan Fitness um the order here is uh, Liam McHale in the All Ireland final in 1996. Obviously, the first game <laughs> didn't didn't play enough football in the second game for us to yeah to race. Uh, so this is the draw game. This is this mm-hmm. is the heartbreak, the biggest. Well, the original heartbreak. I the, don't know. The game itself wasn't the heartbreak. The game itself was like it's it was like kind of going to a house party, and you thought it was finished. And then it was like, oh, wait a minute, it's only nine o'clock. And yet another few hours to go at it. So <laughs> it was kind of, we went up on the bus and uh, I remember I drank so much TK lemonade on the bus. I, I nearly exploded on the bus up <laughs> on the bypass. And we were eating sandwiches and all that stuff. And the crack was unbelievable. As you can imagine, like a gang of lads coming up on a bus. What age you? What was I? I was born in 84, so... You're only 12. 12, Yeah, geez. right. 12, yeah. Okay. All time great memories then. Oh yeah, definitely. It's imprinted, you know. And I remember seeing... Liam McHale on the field and he was kind of like he reminded me of one of my teachers I had a teacher that also played for Mayo years ago TJ Kilgallen oh yeah a tough real tough man you know <laughs> and I remember looking at Liam McHale and he played basketball as well in Balaná so I was like who's that lad there and uh, just yeah the game was great you know it was like end to end kind of action and there was I think there was a bit of a scrap there as well so the whole thing I, I was looking at him as a child going I want to be that man and uh, like you know, obviously, there's uh, is it thirty years now of subsequent heartbreak that you don't realise this this is um, going to be a, a constant little drumbeat in the rest of your life. I thought that that would be the time that we'd win it, and then the floodgates would open. Yeah, but some fella in Mayo once said to me that he thinks it's nearly better if we don't win it because then the party will finish when we do win it. You know? Yeah because the novelty wear off but the longer we leave it the sweeter the prize will become I almost feel like two or three lost finals for a Mayo fan will be like character building but eight whatever it is now eight is it is just yeah. torture that's torture and there's been a few along the way where I was like oh no this is it and I've been telling everyone going, this is it and then you know you're in the pub and you're like ooh maybe this is not it <laughs> and uh, even against the, I think the time the last time we played Dublin I think uh, where I was in Murray's pub there on O'Connell Street and then after the game the dub's like ah fair play we wish you won it as well like you know yeah but that, that's that's even worse. more so yeah yeah it's worse I had a friend who was planning to stay up for the whole weekend after the final and he just he just got a bus straight home after the game because he just like I can't be listening to people you know telling oh, me I that you should have won it like yeah. so that's that's nearly a harder thing to take you know? it is the patronising uh, sorry I think they mean it that's the thing I think they mean it but at the time it's kind of like you know your girlfriend breaking up with you and she's like you're a good lad like yeah <laughs> boss the I don't, want, boss. I don't yeah. want to be around you <laughs> so but anyways yeah uh, the next one on your list is Adrian Sheeran beating Alan Reynolds in midfield yeah it's a, which is a town of Mayo it's like a village you could say yeah right it's a fight it was an organised fight <laughs> <laughs> it was at the time yeah it was an organised fight and Adrian Sheeran was like a all around boxing champion right and Julie, it's the venue was called Julian's, and it was like a massive disco. And like the disco was renowned to be famous. Like people from Sligo would, would go there, Roscommon. Mm. People coming up from Clare on buses. Right. You had different rooms. Like you had the Chaos Chamber. You had like apparently Mayo's biggest dance floor in the middle. The Chaos Chamber. The Chaos Chamber. It's yeah. a good selling point. Mayo's biggest dance floor. Yeah, that's. Yeah. What the, but then I don't know if that was actually factual. Like because this was before the internet, really. So like you couldn't check. Uh, 
Julian's Disco. Is this the one that Nathan used to have a dodgy way of getting people in, in the free? Back. Yeah, Nathan, Oh, yeah, people who in the back. There's all different. He, he had a way of like charging people <laughs> to the side, to get to the side but then yeah, eventually they like found it out and. Um, Obviously, the bouncers weren't very happy about this. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the thing about that place is, my uncle was a bouncer there. Okay. So he'd be like, "Yeah, go on in." Right. Even so, if, so you were guaranteed to get in, even at fourteen. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but but for the actual fight, anyone could win. And uh, the reason why I brought that up, the fight, is because it, it was just like such an epic, off the charts fight. Where like the roof, because the roof wasn't even that high, you know. So everyone was like banging the roof, and at one point, I felt like I saw the sky, like kind of, and the whole roof lifted off the hinges. And uh, Adrian Sheeran won the fight, anyways. But he, he, yeah, he fought for Ireland as well. Was it a close fight? Obviously, it was. It was very close, you know. It was kind of hard to know who was winning, and it, it was just, it felt a bit like Rocky, you know. There was a lot of, a lot of hard body blows going in there, and a lot of Oosh! kind of going, "Oh, your man is who's going to win this?" Yeah, one? there's a there's a strong Irish amateur boxing thing in Mayo. There's been like uh, many Irish champions. Whereas, you know, you, you kind of think there's a few boxing clubs around the country that are mm. kind of considered to be heartlands, but it seems like it was a big deal when you were growing up yeah oh definitely there was boxing clubs all over the place and actually myself and the lads we used to go to uh, this like boxing co- club called Pat Kirby's um, boxing boxing club I guess it was but it was real old school equipment he'd use yeah and uh, there'd be different parts of the training where like you'd put your hands <laughs> above your your shoulders like the, or your head like this and there'd be just people coming in like giving you loads of body shots and like this is before you know you'd have a sports science before sports science came into the game so I don't know if it worked, but I feel like my ribs are still broken. <laughs> well, and also your lifelong love of fitness, which is exactly, yeah, you know, yeah. good said today. That's where it was, it comes I was, from. Yeah, I was on the job learning. So did you box as a kid? No, no I did a lot of sparring. And we went, we used to do this thing where we travel around to different boxing clubs. And we'd kind of just box their local lads. I never actually had an official boxing match, but there was one time we went to Bal. I don't know if you've ever been in Bal. It's a lovely, like, big town there, but in Mayo. But, um... We went down there anyways, but there was, I remember going in there and there was like a, a punching bag in the middle. It was really light, but the lads in there were like kind of punching it and it was like swinging. So we were like, oh no, we're going to get destroyed in this place. Um, and then we went into the ring and yeah, it was, I pr- pretty much got destroyed in a, in a local fight by some lad. And that was, was the end of that? That was kind of like, you know what, I might try and do something a bit easier. Which is scarier, get, uh, like stand up in front of a room full of people for an hour or getting into a, a ring sparring with a, a big lad? I mean, from the outside looking in, the, the boxing would be a lot scarier, but getting up on stage for me is, is kind of scary, you know, it's kind of right. my biggest fear, that's why I'm doing it. Yeah, That's yeah. kind of one of the reasons why I continue to do it, because it really scares me, to the point where I have to actually meditate or learn, I'm trying to learn how to meditate and do affirmations and all that, right. just so I can kind of counteract all the, the negative voices that I get in my head, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so I'm also qualified affirmation expert now as well Jeez, uh, so it works it obviously the meditation works well I've only tried a small bit of it but I definitely think it works yeah like if I have a gig we'll say in Dublin what I'll do is I'll drive into Phoenix Park a few hours before the gig and I'll walk around and, I, and I'll go I am good <laughs> I am doing my best I'm trying you know that kind of thing yeah I guess if people have bought tickets they're, they're dying to see you they know your stuff yeah. they're familiar with you they're already fans definitely but in, in my mind I'd be like okay they're expecting me now to be funny and then right. what if I'm not you know what if I'm just a farce you know the kind of imposter syndrome yeah but there's almost an awkward humour to buzz so people are like expect a little bit of awkwardness yeah. and, and definitely n- not non-perfect definitely yeah, hour, yeah. That's you know? yeah yeah that kind of works I tried to work that to my favour going sure I meant, I meant to fall on stage <laughs> there was one time actually I had a gig in Donegal it was, it was the middle of nowhere and uh, the stage was brought out forward a bit and I have a projector so I'm constantly pointing back to the projector doing slides and stuff like that but uh, didn't I end up falling off the back of the stage <laughs> and the, the slide thing like the <laughs> an old cartoon so people, people laughed that, there you go. that was actually the biggest laugh of the night and I was like that's, cheers no, that's my new ending <laughs> exactly um, the last time we had you on you were in Buenos Aires mm. and the line wasn't amazing but it struck me that you were a well travelled man I, I don't know maybe I just um, oh, he is away when we want to talk to him he is there for a man who travels a lot just pure luck was it okay. just pure luck yeah so uh, yeah Buenos Aires I was there for the the time to win the final yeah so it was nuts it was like Garrett Brooks on steroids it was like <laughs> there's fo- a thought there yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly think about that for a second Garrett Brooks <laughs> squatting while on steroids um, it was like the population of Ireland on the streets and uh, I was hanging out with some people that I know over there girlfriend and different people well and uh 
it was just I got carried away at one point it was like being in an ocean where you're like Jesus I was just getting pulled away and my arms were up there and I, I couldn't really do anything about it so I just got brought into the crowd and then I had to kind of sneak my way through like loads of people and I was like sweating absolute buckets you know <laughs> and I was like I have no idea about anybody here at all so I had to kind of keep walking down like side streets just to get to a point where I could actually like kind of breathe you know and get yeah. my phone out and text and I was like right I'll meet you at this location so ended up meeting them at, at a different location but it was pretty much I was on my own in an ocean yeah. of Argentinians how does that feel? felt quite good actually did it? yeah there was a, I was doing a bit of tango in the middle of it you know you any Spanish? Un porquito, sí. Oh. Bueno. <laughs> well, not, not really much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, the reason I bring this up is because your next one is Steve McManaman for Real Madrid against yeah. Espanyol. So, uh, is this in Barcelona or is this in uh, Madrid? Madrid. Right. Yeah. They won 5-1. Yeah. It's just a, a, a run-of-the-mill La Liga game. McManaman must run the show, does he? Well... Yeah, he did pretty well, like, and I just felt some sort of affinity towards him. I don't know why, like, but it's kind of like that connection you have with, with Liverpool. So when I seen McManaman playing with all the Galacticos, mm. I was like, he's my guy. You know, I want to I want to be that guy. So he, I think he scored a goal, actually, in that game as well. That's goal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was nice to see it, too, because I don't think he was getting a, a real good time when he was over there. Um so yeah that it ends well for him obviously um, with the cracker in a Champions League final but were you a Liverpool fan already? I'm not even a Liverpool fan somebody okay. got me the ticket right so I'm actually a Man United fan yeah so sorry about that lads no, I'm a United fan so United? Like, okay, yeah, cool. yeah it's all good uh, so uh, yeah it was just one of those things where like somebody got me a ticket that's normally kind of what happens I'm not really a great man for getting tickets, but if somebody says to me, do you want a ticket? You take, you say yes. I'll take it because I, I don't want to miss out on, on an experience. And were you just in Madrid and happened to get the ticket or had you gone to, because you knew you were getting the ticket? I, the got, I, I went because I knew I was getting a ticket to go to the game, yeah, so. Okay, yeah. Bernabeu, a good state? Good. Unbelievable, but I found it strange. I found like this, the actual pitch was, it looked a bit smaller than I thought. Like it looked actually right. smaller than you might see like mm. an amateur football field in even in Mayo, like, you know. It looked, yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks smaller than the fields I've been playing on in Mayo. So, yeah. and sorry, is football your first love? Soccer as a kid. Soccer as a kid, and then it went to kind of Gaelic football, and yeah, it was pretty much between those two. And did Gaelic football when you went to school, and like a little bit later, or when Mayo you started going to the Mayo games at twelve, thinking oh, this I is was more I was more so into soccer, you know. But then Gaelic football was really encouraged in school because we had people like TJ Kilgallen, Martin Kearney. Oh yeah, he was another uh, teacher of ours. So. The, it was kind of encouraged to play Gaelic football. Now, I wasn't that good. Mm. I didn't have the height, but I had the touch. I had a good touch on me, but the problem is I couldn't get near the ball. <laughs> so I kind of stuck to the little kind of tidy passes in, in soccer. Um, but then over the years, I've kind of dr- grown more towards the Gaelic football. Right. I don't know what it is. I just feel like, a, because I'm maybe living back in Mayo again. I was going to ask you, you're back living in Mayo and you can feel, <laughs> is, is there are the spidey senses tingling again that this might be the year? Um... Will you be sitting in Murray's and your mate getting a bus home or will you maybe be like, yeah, where do we own this town? <laughs> that's the thing, you see, you have to you have to decide where you're going to be for it, you know, because that's an important feeling to have after. Like, oh. so. it would, Mayo would shut down for oh. weeks, wouldn't it? There was lads crying one of the finals that Mayo lost outside the pubs, just like lads who would never show emotion. Men in their 70s. You know, like lads, like real tough yeah. lads with big hands and they were just like, I just seen them breaking down. I was like, please win it in my time. Jeez. You know, but... Um, I'll probably be in Mayo for the next one. It's a good story, though, the the constant waiting for it. Yeah, I mean, it kind it's of is, yeah. great to live through, I suspect. Maybe it is great to live through, because you always feel alive. That's Definitely, like, you know, yeah, and it makes it all exciting. It is always exciting. Yeah, and like... Your, it, your brand is, we are the exciting team who will... When when we look like we're dead, we're not dead. And when we look like we're going to win it, we're not going to win it. It's like you never keeping know. you on your toes. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have two more to go. Um, this one, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm very surprised. Shea Given yeah. for Ireland against Italy in Poznan <coughs> in 2012. Um, Another free ticket. Right. Well, a, a ticket that it was raffled between myself and the lads. So myself and another friend, Michael Salmon, got two tickets. Right. But for some reason, we just went in different directions to the stadium. <laughs> and uh, we were in the stadium and I was in a big bunch of like Irish, Polish people from all over the world were just just like in the stadium shouting and I don't have really have good eyesight hence uh, I got the glasses so I couldn't quite see what was going on but I remember like I think I was I was asking a fellow beside me and he's like oh Shagan Shagan Givens after saving that one again so I felt like his presence was very important to stop it getting hammered all together yeah I mean <laughs> that's a lot of diving you know yeah, the tournament yeah, yeah. wasn't great no it wasn't great no but the atmosphere was amazing we were actually over in Poznan at the time 
uh, over there doing a bit of filming. Right. But the next day we went to like this kind of water park just to kind of chill out, you know, and just to kind of relax and forget about the, the football. And uh, myself and another lad were in this kind of spa, spa-like yeah, yeah. kind of jacuzzi area. And, uh, you know, there's different etiquette around the world for those kind of things. So we were kind of in a circular room and there was a hose in there just with water coming out of it, just to cool you down. So my friend had the hose out and he started spraying it all over the room. And then all of a sudden, he was like, what's that? And then this like really big Polish guy kind of walked out of the, the <laughs> mist. And he'd been spraying this Polish lad on the chest <laughs> with water. So um, he, he found the funny side of it too, because okay. he was a big dude. Yeah. But uh, that certainly made us forget about the result anyway. Jesus, don't forget something like that in a hurry. Yeah, but like, the Irish fans were at that particular competition everyone was like you're Irish oh yeah. my god yeah. I want to buy you a drink or they want to spend time with you there was a, um, a 24 hour sensation where everyone was like oh you can't be singing the Fields of Athen Rye at the end of the game I was like well I mean uh, for me the Fields of Athen Rye is like a, a horror show where you're mourning the loss of something yeah. terrible and mm-hmm. it's only appropriate when you've been hammered or you're trying to lift up a team who've been beaten the Munster fans did it after the Northampton beat them in the European Cup final in rugby and the Ireland fans did it after that and I thought that was quite appropriate if Leinster fans had broken into it last week I wouldn't have I wouldn't have minded because it's like we still have your backs here there was yeah. like I thought it, I personally at the time no it's just it's, it's just it's the undying support you know that's a patriotic it, song too though patriotic it? yeah I, it's, it's a lament at the end of it all but I, it's a lament for something lost and we had lost our you know our uh all the football matches <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. badly let's not go into detail now exactly, yeah. exactly yeah. and then the last one is Simon Zebo. this is a, a moment of exuberance to finish on Wales against Ireland um, in 2013 my brother got me a ticket for that and he's like do you want to go to this uh, game in Cardiff and I was like I don't really know anything about rugby at all but he goes come on sure, it'll, be, it'll be a bit of fun and again the eyesight was kind of struggling at the time so I remember watching I seen the Zebo flick you know and I was like what was that oh, I couldn't really get it and I had to wait to see it on the big screen to, to like realise how good it was you know because there was a massive kind of roar at the time yeah. you know yeah. and uh, that was amazing yeah that was the one and only rugby, rugby game I've ever been to a lot of times the roar at matches is like I think something amazing has happened what was it it's kind of a, uh, and then you see it again on the big screen and it's Ooh. Yeah. yeah exactly yeah you can digest it a bit better but we went to a pub then quite close to the uh stadium after and then we met some like Welsh ladies and they were like oh go on speak to us in, in like Irish or your Irish accents and all that stuff so we were just chatting to them about the bog <laughs> and fucked them turf and they were loving it so uh I suppose maybe I don't know you might have some Welsh people down the bog what were you saying about the bog what would you say just like just kind of saying stuff like oh I love a bit of foot and turf and you know there's, great, there's a great drying out there and they found that just like hilarious because they'd never heard any bog talk before wow so, so there you go so it was a, a good day and good night yeah, yeah it was good yeah are we to assume that retrospectively now all of these there was also some uh, something else that happened in, like in what was the name of the nightclub uh, Julian's Julian's yeah, good night that night too or the Poznan steam room <laughs> <laughs> the great Poznan yeah. steam room incident I'm, I'm married to like a Polish uh, fellow now there but, you uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> all in all great times you know great experiences and uh, yeah well thanks very much for sharing it so um your next gig is in Mullingar tomorrow night, you said? Mullingar tomorrow night. Tickets still available or no? Uh, I think that one's sold out. That's okay. in Columbia Bar. And then I'm in the Roisin Dove in Galway. And then Dolan's as well in Limerick. So it's kind of like a mini tour. And then I'm going to sort of add on some extra dates at the end of it. Okay, so for dates and fitness advice, get onto Instagram. Please do, yeah. On Coggins, you had to be there. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. It's so unexpected. It's one of those you had to be there moments. You had to be there. It subsequently genuinely did change everything about my life. I had to be there.